Hey there, guys. I am Johnny here at Oz Comic Con, and with me is Trisha Helfer. Trish, I've seen a little bit of something going on with your choice of works. You've been in Mass Effect. You've been in Command and Conquer. You've been in oh, many other uh, the little Battlestar thing. A little Battlestar, a little Starcraft. Yeah, you know. You seem to have a proclivity for the sci-fi. Is that a choice, or is that just pure luck? And that's just pure luck. Um, plain and simple. It's you know I. I enjoy sci-fi but Battlestar was really kind of my first definitely my first series I'd been acting for a year so prior to that so I think once you get you know and Battlestar was you know a cult hit and, and it still continues to find an audience you know to this day like 10 years later so um, once you kind of get known in that then I think that's certainly how I got into video games the first the first game I did was Command and Conquer and they they you know some of the producers were fans of the show and, and they wanted number six in it Welcome to the Brotherhood of Nod. Our relationship with Tiberium has always been greatly misunderstood. Most people do not realize that the roots of our faith extend back several millennium, long before the emergence of the green crystal on Earth in 1995. An event foreseen by our great leader, Cain. And then, you know, then you get to know voice directors and you start um, working with them and, and, and do other jobs. And so, but it's, it's not like I seek out sci-fi, but there's some great stories in sci-fi, you know. I've also turned down a lot of sci-fi, depending on what it is and if I didn't relate to the material or, you know, I tend to not go for like, you know, sharks falling from the sky. No offense, sci-fi, or no offense, audience, or, you know, giant beetles overtaking the earth, that type of thing. I, I tend to kind of veer away from that and, and go more for stories that intrigue me. Um, like when I went back and did Ascension on sci-fi, I, I really enjoyed the premise because as the actor, we kind of knew the, the hook. Ascension is a lifeboat for humanity. Taking with it mankind's best hope for survival. I think as an actor, you want to do all types of different roles. You know, one of my favorite roles I did was playing a Texas Ranger on an ABC show called Killer Women. The show didn't make it very long, but the character was a lot of fun, you know, or playing a lawyer, or like right now, playing Lucifer's mom, you know, the goddess of creation on Lucifer, and um, which also has a, a, you know, a genre bent to it as well, but, uh, and based off a comic book, but I don't, I don't actively seek it out. It's, it's the story and the people involved. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Mark. Oh. What do you think you're doing? I'm taking your lead, son. Learning about your beloved humanity. By dancing at my club. Well, I saw the people on the table smiling and I wanted to discover what they were so happy about. Oh, is it possible it's the money that I pay them? It's possible. But I have to admit, when I started dancing, rubbing up against the other humans, I got a tingling sensation. Okay, that's enough. Excuse me, excuse me. Thank you. Well, that's one of the things you seem to do as well, for lack of a better term. You tend to play boss-ass bitches in everything you do. Is that something that draws you to scripts as well? Um, you know, it's not that I wouldn't want to play a, a different type of character, and I, and I have. But I think, you know, I'm 5'11". I, uh, I have a, you know, strong voice, and, and I think it's, you know, I don't get the, the romantic comedies very often unless the guy happens to be 6'4", you know, or I'm booked first and then they book somebody because not that you can't have a romantic situation with somebody a lot shorter. I did on Battlestar, um, but it's just not necessarily the norm in, in film and television. So that, I think, more so than what, what I try and seek out, because again, as an actor, you want to play all types of different roles. It's what is how people that are doing the hiring perceive me. You're a synthetic woman, a robot. I've said it three times now. Well, forgive me, I'm having the tiniest little bit of trouble believing that because the last time anybody saw the Cylons, they looked more like walking chrome toasters. Those models are still around. They have their uses. One of the things we talked about off-camera was I got a bit of a dud shoulder. It's got a nice little metal plate running through it. From what I've heard, you're also part cyborg. I have, well, Cylon, I prefer than cyborg. But, um, yeah, I have four artificial discs in my back, two in my neck and two in my lumbar. Which come from my believe I saw doing your own stunts, which again, pretty badass. Um, not that I haven't had some amazing stunt doubles uh, for, for you know, the, the things that insurance and, and production will not let me do, but yes, I do do most of my own stunts. Um, but you know, that's not the only thing. It was growing up tall and thin, degenerative discs, uh, being very sporty growing up, 
a car accident, somebody dropped a suitcase on my head in an airplane, like that kind of thing all adds up a little bit at a time. And then, yeah, but I, I had an amazing surgery about eight years ago now, and, and it's been it's been incredible. It's given me, you know, second lease in life, basically. The magic of wonderful science. Yes, <laughs> definitely. I'm sure you are, once you heal properly, you will be saying the same thing. I had to turn down a contract for the Leafs, so, you know, no big loss. Well, you know, I don't think that's much of a loss anyway. Not, not for you, but the Leafs. Now, if you were an oiler going up for the Oilers, hmm.